coming to you live from parts unknown. Here are two guys hanging out, chatting about life, crime, and passing time. One loves to wear his sunglasses inside. He's a connoisseur of tasteless thoughts and an avid fan of Dawson's Creek. Who isn't? And the other is a man who's always willing to one-up your story. He loves his lawn a little too much and has a closet full of white New Balance sneakers. Who doesn't? Here are Captain and Morgan. All right. The first show of 2020. Didn't think we'd make it. Didn't think we'd be here. <laughs> the show or just people in general? I mean, general. Myself. You? Yeah. I didn't think I didn't think you're going to make it to 2010. I barely made it to 2000. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, well, I met you in 97. Uh, yeah, like 96, 97. Yeah. So I, I kind of assume you're going to make it to 2000, but 2010, yeah. no shot. I would have bet against that pony, my friend. <laughs> well, I always said that I was going to be dead by 30, but that didn't happen. So yeah. I won. But you look dead. That's all that matters. I'm dead inside. No. <laughs> all right. Welcome to the Captain and Morgan show. I'm your host, Captain, and with me is my better half, Morgan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? How you are doing? Are you doing a Generation Y? Yeah. Hey. Hey, hey Captain. Hey, how are you doing tonight? How's, how's it going, Captain? Love those guys. I haven't listened to them in a while. I need to listen to them. Oh yeah, been a minute, but I I have been diving. Uh, I want to call myself a uh, what? What do they call that? I guess you'd call him a lion shit princess. Because okay. lately people have been saying, "What podcast do you listen to?" And I go, "Well, I've been staying away from true crime." Yeah, but in the last couple of weeks, sucked me back in. Wait, okay. Sucked me back in. This is a this is a big shock because you you do you stay away from true crime. I mean you have I tried you to. have you have a couple of go to standard go tos which are not true crime related. Right. So so what got you sucked in? Well, <laughs> I want to get I want to get into it too much, but uh, this latest Mara Murray missing Mara Murray podcast I listened to. And I started also diving into a show called true crime bullshit. Okay. Which is, which is funny because I thought that's a stupid name, Yeah, but it's based off of uh, Israel keys. Yep. And it's basically just breaking him down and, and some very good investigative work but he basically, in one of his interviews, said that he didn't want to. He was talking about certain cases because he didn't want it, it to end up true crime bullshit. And so mm-hmm. something to that effect. And that's yeah. why the show is called that. So, yeah, I was diving back into a couple cases. And I think mainly that's probably because we spent so much time on the John Bonet Ramsey case. Yeah. And so just to kind of dive into some other worlds. Um, and you know what? you When we have talked about True Crime Podcasts and what you have listened to previously, you you do like the, I'll call it the long form True Crime Podcast or the the, the single subject. Yes. Like uh, Bob Ruff when uh, his West Memphis 3. We talked about that quite a bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's a case that's like top of the list. You know, like yeah. wanting to solve or or just a case that endlessly fascinates me. And and I, I enjoy those. But I also like the docu-series that are a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. There's nothing worse when you're like 40-some minutes into a documentary and you're like, they could go another six hours. But they're not because it's just yeah. a one-parter. Yeah. Awesome. Even those, even though I think some of those six parters, you probably could have cut out two of the episodes. Yeah, most of the time. But but I think you need some of the 
malarkey in the middle. Yeah. A little minutia. Now, the I tell you, like some of these Drew Crime podcasts that are single subject, um, there's definitely some that, that deserve it. West Member 3 deserved it. Some other ones might not. And so there's a fine so line. So some victims don't deserve it? This is what you're no, 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 no. There, I'm going to say is some cases, there's just not enough out there to 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 make it a, you know, a 20-part right. uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so sometimes you're listening to it, and they start it really good, and then they just start, like, grasping for straws and it just yeah. it starts to get a little weak the, the information that you're getting or they're telling you it gets a little weak you know what they call that in the biz what what's that petering out oh yeah <laughs> and ladies that's not a good thing all the ladies are like petering out that sounds amazing no 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 that's not a good thing mm-hmm. um it's a bad thing no uh i would hate to do a long form Like, one part of me would love it because you could dive in so deep into a case. But I think knowing how many episodes, even like with the John Bonet Ramsey case, we knew we're going to try to stick to six episodes. And we had a pretty clear cut idea of what those six episodes were going to be. And then you start diving in and you're going, this could be a 20 parter. Yeah. But, But also, I just don't think I have the... I don't know if I could do that. I think. Well, I don't know. I'll take that back. I could do that with a, like a John Bonet Ramsey case. I could do that with a West Memphis three. Like even when we did West Memphis three, we did three episodes. It's yeah. Not enough. No, it's not enough. No, no, no. But yeah, we have to jump. And that that's the other thing too is, and what uh, Nick and I were talking about on off the record this week was, there's all these documentaries that come out like this new one about puka not Hada, and i haven't even listened to it yet or i haven't watched, watched it. it yet yeah because we've already covered that case we're on to the next case mm-hmm. i gotta spend time reading about that so i can sit there for hours and listen to nick say stuff i already know yeah that one's yeah. that, that one's Netflix, right? It's something like I think that's on Netflix. It's yeah. like called like "Don't fuck with cats" or something like that. Yeah, or that's why I, I post know. I posted the picture of cats today on the True Crime Garage Instagram. Some lady, I think that some lady sent us uh, some cat stickers. But when I posted it, a couple of people were like, "I know how I'm spending my money." I'm like, we're not selling these. <laughs> we're not selling these. We're not selling cat stickers. They're like, oh my god, you guys have cat stickers now. We're gonna buy them. <laughs> yeah, I should buy a cat sticker. If I if I'm going to make a uh, uh, an animal shirt, I'm making a Frank shirt. You know. Yeah, like I'm okay. Like I'm looking at now. Those cats have like nothing to do with your sh- your show. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens sometimes. People don't fully pay attention, you know. Isn't that amazing how you can just put you know, put something out there and someone's like, "Oh my god, I'm going to buy it." Like it could just be completely random. It's like, "Oh my god, I'm going to buy it." Well, I always wanted uh, in the garage store because I like to think of it as like a garage sale. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a bunch of other podcasts, and not just true crime podcasts, but podcasts in general. And we do it with our show. We have a direct shipping deal right distribution Mm -hmm. deal and so we well i can't i don't want to say we i don't want to take the credit you make really cool designs and then you give them to them Mm -hmm. they render them and they put them on nice shirts yeah and it cuts out a lot of the middleman it's hard to find a good printer with true crime garage we've never done that we've we found a printer but we started way back in the day when there was like five people listening and we were like, we're going to print our own shirts and we'll, we'll mail them out. And maybe that could be part of our job, yeah. you know? And so we can make a one day, we hope to make a living doing the show. And so we've done that for 
three years now, two and a half years now, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of work, but I also think we sell more than some of the other true, you know, because, you know, you were at CrimeCon. I mean, yeah. Bob Ruff is, he's a mensch, right? Love that guy. Want to hug that guy, squeeze that guy. What a great beard. Like he, he's Duck. like me, but handsome. When I see him, I'm like, that's what handsome guys with beards look like. Nick is a big fan of, I believe his name's Mike. It's the co-host. Oh yeah. 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 Nick's like super fan of his, like gets giddy around him. It's strange. Speaking of crime con, what's our, got a promo code for crime con? No. <laughs> <laughs> we should though, right? Are, are are you going to crime con? Have we figured that out yet? Well, I haven't been invited yet. Oh, man. Well, then call them. <laughs> Ask them why you haven't been invited yet. Like, come on, guys. Get on it. Yeah. I, I think I, I was thinking in the back of my head, do I invite him, but then ask him to get his own room? Oh, yeah. Like, hey, do you want to come to CrimeCon this year, but not share rooms again? Well, look, it, it was fine and dandy, but we, there were obvious, obviously issues with sharing rooms. The snoring. <laughs> right? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, I don't think there was too many issues. I mean, we. I mean, we didn't get separated too much. No, and honestly, we we weren't we weren't in the room very much. No, we're party at all. Party animals, road dogs. God. Too old for that shit. Oh, I I don't know if I can do it again. I don't know if I could do. I mean, I I've hit CrimeCon hard every year, but last year hardest. I, and I, th- you know what? I think it's. It's because of where it was, right? It was in New Orleans and uh-huh. the location. Like you're right there in downtown and there's, so there's bars everywhere. What's well, the most bar? I just kept going to the same bar though. I know. Because <laughs> they had handsome bartenders. Like these g- it, gentlemen are, smell musky. Yeah. I like it. And, I mean, and it was a good place until, until we broke the, their toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you break their toilet? Well, I didn't personally, but if, so so when when was it? Was it um? It must have been Friday night at Crime Con. Yeah, we had the uh, I don't know what you want to call it. We had the tr- the 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 meet the you know not me and Green. True Crime Garage meetup, right? Yeah, the meetup. You know, and so it's True Crime Garage. Bob Ruff was there. Where he he lost a drinking contest. Justin and Aaron, Justin from Aaron. Generation Y. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, Paul Hole showed up with Billy, Billy Jensen. Yeah, Billy Jensen, super nice guy. Yeah. I call him a sweetheart. I call him my sweetheart. He also likes Billy's to, your sweetheart. Yeah, well, because I like to hug sometimes when I'm drunk. Yeah, and uh. I think Billy put his arm around me a couple times. I don't think he liked it. <laughs> I think, but I think uh, he was being a sweetheart. Billy might have been the only person taller than you at CrimeCon. Billy Jensen is tall. Ah, uh, yeah, he's very tall, but not a good basketball player. Oh no. I, I guessing. You're assuming. I'm guessing. <laughs> He's spending too much time. Maggie uh, was know. there. Maggie from the yeah. the Mara Murray. Maggie is fantastic. I we made the joke that she was carrying my child. Yes. Which is not true. Um, I think her boyfriend would be very upset if that was true. Uh she was there. We drank. Mm-hmm. She drank. drank. She 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 has this uh, drunk smile. Well, not, not saying that she was like sloppy drunk, but she was definitely drinking enough to be drunk, but didn't act mm-hmm. drunk. But she just, you can like look over. And even if she doesn't know what's going on, she's smiling, <laughs> which was cool. I met Aaron, yeah. Aaron Larkin. Mm-hmm. She does a oh, yeah. Mara Murray podcast. 
not the one that you you've been listening to then though no because tim and lance i think i invited them i don't know if they made it i think they went i think oh, they, had they went else. to yeah i think they went to go see uh true crime obsessed they had a live show that night uh, yeah. that they went to which yeah. i think they're doing a live show together i Again, I don't know if I will do a live show. I've been thinking about doing a little captain tour, though. You wouldn't do a uh, live show with me? Well, I'd call it the captain tour. Because <laughs> I want to set sail on tour, see? <laughs> oh. Set sail good. on tour. I don't know where I'd go, and I don't know exactly what I'd talk about. Um, But I, I here's what I was thinking. I go hit a couple major cities that I want to go to mm-hmm. anyways. So it's an, so it's an excuse to go to these cities. Yeah. But it may, like it's Chicago. I haven't been in a while. Two days in Chicago is fine with me. Mm-hmm. Do a, a little live show meetup type thing where I go up. Maybe I do some stand up, mm-hmm. which is really just me telling a bunch of stupid stories about my childhood. That you probably already heard on the show. Yeah. Or maybe I, I start telling uh, people stories of, uh, that aren't true. They're they're your stories of your childhood. But yeah. I pawn them off no one would, as my own. <laughs> no one would ever know. Yeah. And then do a little Q&A. Mm-hmm. And this is all I was saying. And this is not to be rude. I'm just saying that if we did a and a if what if they didn't ask you any questions? It's fine with me. But you know what I mean? Like it'd be a little yeah, strange. Yeah. But yeah. we'll do a captain tour, but you come on the tour. Okay. Like you're the surprise guest. <laughs> Every night. Everybody's got a surprise guest. Yeah. You could be the opener. <laughs> and opening the show is Morgan. Some people super excited. Other people yeah. completely confused. They're like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. Cause if anybody's wondering if this show is huge, Captain and Morgan, the answer is it should be. It should be. It should be number one in your heart. You know what? No, I was gonna say that. It's like we are huge where it counts. And that is in the heart <laughs> of all of our listeners. I wondered where you're going with that. We're huge where it counts. Can we make a Inner shirt pants. that says we're huge where it counts? Don, watch this. I'm writing this down so it's, I don't forget. We're huge where it counts. No, uh, I made Aaron cry. Oh, okay. Back to Crime Con. Okay. Yeah, I made Aaron cry. Didn't we do like a Crime Con thing? We talked about it, right? Or was that on Discord? That was on Discord. I don't think we ever talked about it on the show. No. It might be on YouTube, maybe, but no, we never talked about it on the show. Well, it's funny about, so Aaron, me and Aaron would battle on Twitter just about random stuff. Mm-hmm. But what I loved so much about it was that we'd just do it in the DMs, you know? Yeah. And oh, you guys are sliding into each other's DMs? Yeah. Viciously sliding. Rug burn sliding. <laughs> and um we'd get into these, you know, little debates here and there and and but she, but she never she could have then took some of the stuff public. It's mm-hmm. not like I say anything bad. Yeah. But she could have tried to make the conversation go public is what I'm saying. Yeah. And and she never did. So and I always respected that. But she comes hard in the paint. Hard in the paint, my friends. Yeah. And so, but what what was funny is that, so I was hanging out with her and we're talking and um, I basically was telling her, you, I, w- I was doing it on purpose, right? Because we had so many arguments. That my whole thing was like, I started realizing that she was very, she's very aggressive, right? She's very, 
uh, brash. Okay. Um, her podcast is called 107 Degrees Podcast. If you want a podcast, a long, it's a long form, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't, I don't think she puts out podcasts regularly. I think it's just when they get more information. Yeah. But it's, I've, I've listened to some stuff. I can't say I've listened to it all because Aaron is so cool to me that she has sent me clips of stuff that is not even on the show, stuff that she would never air. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. She sent me like long form interviews of stuff that she's still putting together the research to make a show about. So, yeah, anyways, so I was like, yeah, you come off and all, oh, uh, you're so embraceive and you're so standoffish. And I was just messing around, right? And then she goes to get a drink and there was like an asshole bartender there that night. Yeah. And he was super rude to her. So then she oh, comes yeah, back yeah. and she gets a little, she is now because she she's a fan of True Crime Garage. Yeah. And so now she's meeting this person, you know, meeting the captain, Captain Doucheface, right? At this bar, she gets to talk to him. And he's instantly bashing her. I thought I was just joking, right? I wasn't being too serious. She goes to get a a drink. The bartender cuts her off because he was probably rude. And then she tried to be rude back. Then he's like, you're cut off. And then she came back and she's a little teary eyed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt bad for her. But I went in and, and our buddy, the bartender... <sighs> Oh, okay. So it was the down the downstairs. Yeah, you know uh, what I'm talking Guy about. Fieri. Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri. That's right. Guy yeah. the Guy Fieri bartender. Mm-hmm. Was a douchey douche. Yeah. He was such a douche. And he was a douche to me later that night. So so I'm like, oh, you're this girl's getting upset. I I don't know her that well, right? Yeah, yeah. Um But it was actually good. It was like this good moment because, and the other thing too, was she was hanging out with the family, the Mara Murray family, the whole time at CrimeCon. And I think anybody that's working on a singular case, the frustration in that would be pretty difficult as far as is the case moving forward or not. Yeah. And so... Yeah, but it was funny because it's like, but that little moment, I was like, oh, I was just messing around. Don't You can't take me that serious. And then we had a, a really great talk about uh, the case she's working on, the Mara Murray case, and some different ideas, and we differ on things, so we went, we went back to bitching at each other. But I have a lot of respect for the information that she's putting out because it takes her a while to do so. So that's where the the intrigue that I had to listen to the the new episode of Mara Murray. Mm-hmm. My intrigue was that they were talking about these allegations against Bill Roush. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it wasn't. Am I wrong in thinking that she was she was kind of. I don't want to say pro Bill Roush, but she still is pro Bill Roush. Roush, blah, blah, blah. don't drink and do a podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, she's pro Bill Roush, and so that's the strange thing. I don't agree with her on it, right? Yeah, but I don't know why she is pro Bill Roush. Mm. I also know that she's heavily researched stuff. So, okay, this is kind of behind the scenes stuff. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this stuff. Fuck it, right? Fuck it. Yeah. You know, I don't want this show to be 
your Captain Morgan show doesn't need to be true crimey. No, no. But I think it needs to be a little more true crimey. Okay. I need I have too much shit. I have to vent, right? Yeah. I have to confess my love for Bob Ruff. Yeah. I have to say that I love him. And his musk and I miss it. And I'm I'll hug him so tight. Bob's wife is amazing as well. Um, I don't think she'd let me hug her though. I don't think Bob would let me hug her either. That's my goal. You don't to hug them both at the same time next year. No, but I, I re- respect. Um... Okay, let's just get into it. Fuck it, right? Okay, we're just going. We're just dropping some shit, right? I'm excited. Let's do it. Well, this could piss some people off, and that's okay. That's okay. So we're going to go from 10 listeners to five. We'll go to two. Don't care. <laughs> Don't care. So because of the little confrontation at CrimeCon, um, I then would message Aaron more in, in a friendly way because I felt, mm-hmm. I felt like we made a connection there. Yeah. She doesn't always see eye to eye with Maggie. I have a connection with Maggie as well. I have a connection with Tim and Lance. I have a connection with James Renner. James Renner and Aaron don't get along. Um, Tim and Lance got along with Aaron quite a bit, actually used a lot of her information to create content for their show. They have now backed away from that part. Oh. Right? Okay, yeah. They're now at odds. First of all, all you dumb dumbs are researching the same damn case. You can be friends. You can be... I think there should be a level of respect shown. Like, do I know the beautiful ladies? Personally, of... My favorite murder? No. But if somebody comes up to me and says, that's their favorite show, awesome. That is awesome. Because they seem like nice people, right? They're lovely, right? I follow both of them on social media. Karen cracks me up. I think I find her the funniest of the two. Yeah. Not saying not saying the other one's not funny. I'm just saying I think not on the show. Equally on the show when I listen to My Favorite Murder, equally both funny. I'm just putting it out there yeah, so yeah. I don't get any hate mail. I don't know if that statement's true, but I said it so you can't write me hate mail. But Karen's Social media cracks me up, and I love it. But if somebody comes up and says, I hate my favorite murder, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a real douchey thing to say to me. Like, if you think that that's going to get me on your side. Because I understand the work that has to be put into a show. So I respect the fact that they're putting out content. And the majority of the content they're putting out is free. Yep. Yeah. So huge respect. And then there's a a bunch of other shows that people say, like True Crime Obsessed. I think I've seen some clips online. I haven't had the time to dive much into their show. Right? I know that, I, I believe the guy's name is Pat. And I know he's really good friends with Maggie. So if Maggie likes him. Good dude. I like to hug him. You know what I mean? Snuggle. Get up in there. Give him some captain love. But you know what I mean? Like there's a level of respect that I just think people that are putting out content and and the manner in which they're doing so. So I have no beef with Aaron. No beef. I have no beef 
with Tim and Lance. Love those guys. Shout out to Crawl Space, their other show. Love Maggie. Almost had a baby with Maggie. Almost. Fictitious baby. And we fictitiously made love. And you're fictitiously going to move to Montana. Yeah, we're going to move to Montana and have a ranch and raise cattle. It's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to get tattooed up and look like a member of Lost Boys. (laughs) And look, James Renner, King of Cleveland, which is a joke because there's no way in hell James Renner is the King of Cleveland. And maybe you hate him. Maybe you think he's a douche. Maybe you think his his information's wrong. Maybe you think he's a bad researcher. I don't know what you think of him. The guy didn't know me. Drove down two and a half hours both ways. Mm-hmm. So a total of five hours. Spent hours at a studio for a guy that he didn't know. For a show he didn't know. Yes, it was to promote his own stuff. But he could have simply said, yeah, give me a call on the phone. I'm not talking to Nick and the captain. Who the fuck is the captain? Right? Yeah. But he didn't do that. He was nice to me. So he didn't he didn't burn me. He's never burnt me. So I I can't hate him. Do I agree with everything he says? Absolutely not. It's just not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Not gonna happen, James. I don't care how much you drug me in my drinks. We're not gonna agree on everything. But I have a level of respect for these individuals. Now, do I agree with everything they do or how they do it? No, but guess what? The, you know what they are, Morgan? What's that? Well, what are all these individuals that I'm talking to? They're they're podcasters. They're entertainers. They're, they're adults. People. They're adults. Right? So it's not yeah, yeah. my job. Now, there's another guy that has researched the Mara Murray case extensively. Mm-hmm. And he was a part of the six-part documentary, which I think is a great documentary. If you want to dive into something, the Oxygen's six-part documentary on Mara Murray, that's good good shit, right? Yeah. And plus, there's a lot of eye candy. There's Tim and Lance. There's Art. We drank with Art. Yep. And that boy can drink. He drinks so much that if you try to keep up with him, you'll die. That's a fact. Oh, what's the other guy, though? Uh, the other investigator. He was on the six-part series of um, the disappearance of Mara Murray. I feel like I have to look that up now. Um, yeah, I'm looking it up. Yeah. You might have to you know, suck this together, right? <laughs> uh, uh, oxygen. Mara Murray. Let's see if I can. I know his name. Is I. I just can't. Off the top of my uh, head, I can't uh, figure oh, it out. James Renner was on it. James Renner was on it. Yeah, yeah. James Renner was on it. Investigator Johnson. No, that's uh. Maggie was. Art and Maggie were the host. Tim Lance, Dick, Dick Guy. What a great name that is. John Smith. Investigator John Smith, right? That's not a generic name at all. It's not. It's not a fictitious name. But John Smith, right? Mm -hmm. He says some crazy stuff. I don't know all he says, but trust me, I've heard from Tim and Lance that John Smith says crazy stuff. I heard from James Renner, uh, John Smith says some crazy stuff. I thought during the documentary, John Smith came off very well. Right. Mm-hmm. I've looked in some into some of the research he has done. He also did some stuff with Brianna Maitland's case. Yeah. And you know what I yeah. respect? I respect that this guy took his time out of his own life and researched a missing person's case and tried to do things in his power to get people to talk about it. So we have all these players, and a lot of them hate each other, right? Yeah. And a lot of them talk shit about each other. And and I don't understand that. 
because I feel like on some level, have a little bit of respect for each other. Like, agree to disagree. But 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 then I also question, does the bickering back and forth, does that also help the popularity of the case? Like, it is a distraction, right? It's a distraction to anybody that's invested in the case. It's a distraction, yeah. but at the same time, it gets people talking. But how many people are actually aware of the bickering? Well, I would say what I'm saying is the people that really follow that case. Mm -hmm. They all do. They all know. But yeah. it was interesting because Bill Roush, he was charged with uh, some sexual assaults. Mm -hmm. And and then he had his, uh, there was a lady that he had an affair with. And she came forward and now she's making some accusations. Uh, and then basically what happened in the trial, there was a trial for Bill Roush. For anybody that doesn't know, Bill Roush was Mara Murray's boyfriend at the time that she went missing. And some sketchy things has come out about this dude. And, but I don't know if that has anything to do with the case or anything to do with his girlfriend at the time going missing. Yeah. But doesn't mean he's not a douche. But it's also kind of strange, too, because he had an affair with this lady. She made some weird claims about him. Uh, but she's made she made some weird claims about some of the other people she talked to about this case. And she also kind of made some weird claims about James Renner as well. Yeah. And so... So Tim and Lance were and Tim Lance and uh, Tim and Lance and Renner were talking about what happened at the trial and that there was a protection order um granted towards the victim. And so I don't know what that means for the case. Um and obviously Bill had his day in court to argue and yes, it's a protection order, so it's different than a restraining order. It's kind of like the step above that. But, uh, and look, it's a douchey thing to have, you know, a, a few, a couple years to, I think, a few years uh, affair on your wife. Douchey, right? Yeah. Um, but I also think it's like douchey on her end a little bit too. And I I, I could see somebody go, why are you victim blaming me? Well, no, at, at the start of this, you know, at the start of this, it was two adults that got into a relationship with e each other. And she had to know at some point that he was married. And I don't think it's that out of the line to say the, the other person's douchey as well. Right? I believe because you knew what you're getting into. Like I saw this thing where this woman posted, if all women would stand up for other women, then when that guy that thinks he's hot shit and wants to step out on his wife wants to, there's nobody to step out with. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because then she's like, no, I can't because you're married and that would be wrong. That would be me doing your wife wrong. I don't know your wife. But that'd be, and look, there's a, look, there's a lot of gray areas in this conversation. You know, I understand everybody's marriages are different and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I'm just saying for the most part. Um, So is Bill Roush a douchebag? Yeah, he seems douchey. Right. Um, I don't know what to believe. I'm not saying I don't believe the allegations against him. I think because um, one of the big ones is that during sex, he would choke her and call her Mara. Which is creepy as fuck. Yes, it's very weird. But... What I have a hard time is, 
And again, a lot of respect for Tim and Lance and James Renner. But come on, let's not act like, you know, if I was having an affair with this lady and she asked me to choke her, it wouldn't be the first time a girl asked me to choke her. Okay. Right? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm just saying it's a thing that some people are into. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying it's my cup of tea. No, 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 no. Okay, so yeah, that that's not, I mean, to some people that's not, would not be abnormal. What's abnormal is to choke and and to call them by your dead girlfriend's name. You think that's weird? That is weird. Really? Yeah. You don't think that's weird? Fuck yeah, I think it's weird. <laughs> where, do you like, think, where, where do you think I was going with this? I don't oh, know. Man. Well, I thought you knew me. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, I did too. Yeah. You don't think that's weird? I got you You're so like, no, good. I, I, I got you I so good. Time. I'm so proud of myself for that one because I was like, just keep keep going with it. My butt puckered a little bit. No, it's super strange. And yeah. and I had this I w- went on a date with a girl one time. Really uh, looked a lot like Rachel McAdams. Okay. Really pretty girl and the first date was like real nice. I think we went and like got ice cream. And Bexley, Ohio, this right by the college I went to, and they have old houses, and some of the roads are brick. And we got ice cream, and we uh, walked around the neighborhood because they're like giant houses, right? Yeah, we kind of talked about what you know, what what kind of life are these people living that their house can be a mansion, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like. And then we went and got some coffee and kept walking and talking. It was like this nice, simple, kind of romantic evening, right? Mm-hmm. And then the next next night we hung out, very simple date as well. And uh, we started making out. Then we went back to my place, started making out more. Clothes are not even off, right? Yeah. And she says, looks me dead in the eye. I want you to punch me. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? What? Now, I think at this point, I'm, I'm going to tell this story. And I know that the last episode we talked about my penis being hurt. But since we're on the subject, she said, I want you to punch me. And I'm like thinking, like, does she mean like smack her in the face? I'm so confused at this point. So I have like my hand on her face, like how you'd like okay. put your hand on the girl's face to kiss her. Or like yeah. you put your hand on Tim and Lance's face if you're going to kiss him. No. Um, you're being smooth and you're, you know, yeah, gentle. But I'm like, do I just like smack her in the face? She's like, come on, bitch, just hit me. Right, no, no. And so at this point, I think maybe her hand was on my my stuff. I yeah. think my stuff came out of my pants a little bit. Just a little bit, right? A little, po- little, little pokey. Little Turtle poke, head pokey. is poking out, right? Mm-hmm. Hello, good to see you. Good morning. And then... I was like, I kind of like just was kissing her. Like, let's not go back to the punching. And she's like, no, seriously, I want you to hit me. And I was like, I don't know how (laughs) to hit you. Yeah. And she's like, I'm like, like, you want me to spank you? I'm pretty young at this point. Like early twenties. Um, and you're trying to you're trying to like deflect away from the punching. I was raised point. Catholic and I didn't think I was going to have sex till I was married. Mm-hmm. And now I'm 
be an ask. And this is not much after me losing my virginity in my 20s. Mm -hmm. That I'm like, this girl wants me to punch her. I, I don't even know if that at that point I ever smacked a girl's ass. And somebody's telling me, punch me. And I'm like, I don't know how. She's like, with your fist, you idiot, did or something like that. She, did she ever like indicate like where she wanted you to punch her? Did she want you to punch her in the stomach? She and the arm? Said, she wanted you to punch in the face? She, she might have said like, punch me in the face, idiot, or something like that. And it wigged me out so bad that when I got up, I think I was on a couch or something, but I got up. And I decided to try to pull my uh, zipper up at the same time. Like, I oh, need to get no. out of here, right? Uh-uh. That, mm-mm. No, I didn't pinch my penis. Oh. But I moved it so fast, and my penis jumped out of the way so quick. It was almost like I was on a subway track. And the subway came. And my penis just jumped right off. So I wouldn't get hit by the subway, right? By the train going through. But it gave me a, a, a zipper burn, <laughs> which is better than getting your penis caught in the zipper. B- yeah. But telling you, it wasn't good. So then I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not going to hit you, right? I can't hit you. Yeah. It's not my thing. And then she's like, "My, oh, I'm sorry. My boyfriend used to do that. He used to like it. I'm like, again, again, if you're an adult and you're into that, I think you might want to talk to a therapist, but at the same time, you're an adult. I'm not going to judge. You can make, you can make that choice. The problem, this isn't a problem, right? But then I had to, wait, but then I had to drive her all the way back. I think I was living on the west side. I had to drive her all the way back to the east side (laughs) with a zipper burn on my dick. Yeah. I hope my mom doesn't listen to this show. Well, you know, if if your mom does, she'll be proud of you for not punching this girl in the face. Yeah. I hope so. Hey, mom, I didn't hit her. (laughs) Are you proud of me? No. I got zipper burn instead of punching a girl. <laughs> Are you no, proud of me? Seriously, if this is someone's thing, that's fine, right? But there has to be some sort of understanding or level of trust or something that goes beyond just I'm making out with this dude. We're about to, you know, we're getting pretty intimate. So I wanted to punch me in the face, right? Yeah. You, you, that's fucking insane. Yeah. It's very insane. I, I, <laughs> you know what's insane is I still called her. <laughs> like, like, like if something changed, you know. Yeah. Like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> sorry, I didn't. Still want pu- punch in the face? Yeah, sorry, I didn't punch you in the face the other day. But uh, <laughs> is that still is that still something you're into? Yeah. Are you yes. Into- okay. Well, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. I got in a bar fight, though, and I decided that maybe it's time to try something new. No, I think the thing that got me, so this was like probably, I let a couple days go by. But I had a couple messages. Hey, I hope you had a good week and blah, blah, blah. And I just kept on thinking, maybe, maybe there were like drugs in the dinner or wherever we went, right? Yeah. But, uh. No, the funny thing was, uh, you know, like I said, early 20s, dumb. And I called her to say, hey, well, what are you doing Friday? You know, because I was also thinking, like, maybe this girl was in a, a very bad relationship. She was in an abusive relationship, right? Well, it kind of sounds like it if she said my boyfriend right. liked to do this to me. Right. That's what I was thinking. And like I said, I was young and stupid, and I, I wasn't going to tell somebody, maybe you need to talk to a therapist. Yeah. So I think my thought was, well, maybe she's just in an abusive relationship, and maybe she's not into that. Maybe she just thought that's what guys are into. And I just thought, 
well, let's go. We had such a good time getting the ice cream and the coffee and then going to dinner that maybe we could do that again and have a talk that like, that's not okay. Or I'm not okay with that. And but is that a deal breaker? <laughs> is it a deal breaker? If I don't want to punch you in the face, I wouldn't mind buying you flowers, but I don't want to punch you in the face. I'll open yeah. the door for you, but I don't want to punch you in the face. You know what I mean? It's fucking insane. Like, I'll hold hands with you, but I don't want to punch you in the face. Yeah. I'll pay for dinner. Don't want to punch you in the face. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make me a bad guy? No. Does that make me... <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> and uh, so I remember, I was like, what are you doing Friday? I'd like to take you out again. And... She says, going to this club, I think I'm going to try ecstasy. Oh. Which again, fine. Okay, cool. To each yep. is their own. I've done some mm-hmm. stuff in my past, right? Mm-hmm. Well, not at this point. I was currently in that phase of trying things out, experimenting, if you will. I like to call it my Jimi Hendrix phase. Um <laughs> my Jimi Hendrix and Bon Scott face. <laughs> so I say, uh, oh, uh, you're going to the club and you're going to try ecstasy. Okay, that's that's cool. Well, I guess have fun with that because I'm thinking, yeah, maybe this is not somebody I want to invest more time into. Yeah. But this is where it sealed the deal. She said, you should come. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. She's like, yeah, no, I would invite you, but uh, me and my mom are going to the club and we're doing ecstasy together. Whoa. Yeah, and then I was like, yo, what? You know, it's one thing to go have a beer with your dad. Yeah. You know, but I'd be like, if, hey, me and my dad are going to go do some cocaine at the But I tell club. you what, it if you did go to the club at night, that could have led to a whole another episode of Captain and Morgan. That's next week's episode. <laughs> when I went to the club with the mother and daughter team. Hey. And guess what? I punched them both in the face. No. Uh, yeah, that's the last time I talked to her. I don't think I ever called her again. And I don't think she ever called me. I think she knew. I went across the line. Yeah. With this guy. I mean, again, if that's your thing, that's your thing. No, so back to the Mara Murray stuff. <laughs> After punching some girl asking you to punch in her face, back to Mara, Mara Murray. Right, but one of the things that I heard about this accusation, right? Because mm-hmm. there's no proof that he did this. It sounds awful. Yeah. Now, if you take away him using uh, saying the name of a missing girl that he dated, mm-hmm. then it's just something that they're into. And as long as it's consensual and they're adults, that's their business, right? Yeah. None of my business. None my business. None ya. Yeah. None your business. But then once you throw in that he said, well, I'm going to call you Mara, which was the girl that I was dating and she went missing. But I also heard it from the other, the other foot, right? That the name and you calling me this name was not calling, coming from Bill Roush. It's coming from what we'd consider, I guess, the victim in the case, right? She wanted to be called it, Mara. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that makes it any better. No. Because. It's fucked up either way. Right. I believe so. I. Be, okay. <laughs> we got to unpack this a little bit. Okay, Every time we talk, I think this is it. After this show, I'm not going to be allowed on any podcast. Right. <laughs> So I want to be very clear about this. If anybody forces you to do anything that is absolutely wrong and they deserve high punishment for that, Mm -hmm. period, 
But to me, I liken that as Bill Roush was in a situation just like me. Punched me in the face. Right? At that point, you got to put on your big boy pants. And you might get a zipper burn on your cock. But you got to do the right thing. Yeah. Be a good guy. You know what I mean? Sometimes this girl that I went out with was probably damaged. Right? She probably had bad things happen to her in her past. And some people take advantage of that. And they're awful human beings. And some people, look, I wish I was smarter. I wish I would have been able to say, I I wish I would have had the guts to tell this girl, I don't know if that's right. And I don't know much about love or anything, but I don't want to love you that way. Yeah. I wouldn't show my love in that way. And it's the second date anyway, so... Duh, don't love you. But I also don't hate you. I also don't want to punch you in the face. So it, it's very weird. And But the, also the thing, too, is from some of my knowledge that this information, these transcripts weren't supposed to get out to the public. So the fact that Tim and Lance and, and James were talking about on the podcast seemed a little odd to me. Um. But but I think at the end of the day, what I've always said from the beginning, um, and this is where me and James Renner differ big time, is I believe I said from the beginning, you got to start off with Bill Roush. He's a suspect. And you got to start clearing people. And I don't think I don't think he was. I don't think he was properly. Now, some people say he was properly cleared by law enforcement. And if they did, okay, I just, I'm not privy to that information. So I don't know how they did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But he's the boyfriend of a girl that went missing. So let's just figure out where his whereabouts are. But guess what? I'm going to do that with all of her close friends. I'm going to do that also with her family members. Because that's how it works. Because mm-hmm. yeah. most of the time, if somebody is murdered, it's normally by somebody they know. So we'll start there. And yeah, we don't have any proof that she was murdered, but I don't have any proof that she's alive. Mm-hmm. And it's also just like when the information came out about the, the, the soccer coach. I think it was the soccer coach or track coach. Track, or yeah. track, yeah, track coach. Yeah. And that, that she w- was uh, supposedly hooking up with. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, oh, well, she might have been going up to this campground that was owned by the university, and he would have had access to it, this coach. And then I also heard from multiple people that relationships between student coaches and and and, and students is big no-no, right? Yeah. And I always said, this guy needs to be looked into more. James at the beginning said, well, this guy talked to me, so he's a good guy. He's probably a douche, too. I mean, he also said that Bill Roush was a stand-up guy in the beginning. And now his tune has changed, right? And that once doesn't... information comes out, then well, yes, once the right. truth comes out, yeah. Right, which I'm totally fine with. But I don't know. If I'm investigating a case... I'm just standoffish a little bit is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Just because because if I talked to Bill Roush, that would not make me go, well, he talked to me, so therefore he's a good guy. But it really frustrates me about this case because I've met everybody involved. Even when a bunch of the people involved say this one guy is crazy, John Smith, right? I'm going to go, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's put out good information and he's put forth an effort. I don't know much about him, right? But I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I also saw him on TV. I thought he came across as knowledgeable. And again, somebody that put time and effort into solving a case of a missing girl. 
Now, some people could say, well, she wasn't a girl. Why do you say girl? Young lady, whatever you want to say. Being almost 40 now, that's a very young kid that went missing. I look at 18-year-olds different now or 20-year-olds different or the poor young 20-year-old me being asked if I'd punch them in the face. But I think it's funny when uh, some sometimes these podcasters act like some of these sexual acts or sexual things that happen behind closed doors probably more often w- want to act like it's so abnormal. But again, the calling the name, whether it's your idea or it's her idea, it's both bad. Yeah. But I'll... But if it was her idea, I'm just saying, if it was her idea, I would have a hard time believing much of anything, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know. But again, or was it, did she say it, but it was really his idea that he he made her think it was her idea? I don't know. Um, I feel bad for anybody that, to me, if she came up with that idea or didn't come up with that idea, either way, I think this person has probably some domestic violence in their past, probably has some abusiveness in their past, probably has some situations where she's maybe some control issues. I think just in general to be having an in-depth relationship with a married man is a little strange anyways. And again, somebody could say, well, man, you sound like you're a Bill Roush supporter. Absolutely not. Like I said, he would not be off the table. He'd be the first person I'd want to talk to. Maybe he'd talk to me, maybe he wouldn't. But also, if he talked to me, I wouldn't jump on the train of, he's a stand-up guy. Just because he wanted to talk to me. And, and, And Renner does that too often, too. Somebody doesn't want to talk to him, what do they got to hide? Maybe they just don't know you, and maybe they just don't want to talk to you. You know, it's that simple. Yeah. yeah. But like in this, it's so it's so strange. So so one, I wonder if Aaron, like, because she defends Bill so hard, and I don't think that's a good look. But but I also think like if you're really truly trying to solve a case, you have to distance yourself from this individual. Unless you 100% cleared him. And if you 100% cleared him, then maybe come out and say why you did. Yeah. In your eyes or your investigation. But again, tons of respect for anybody that's going to put time and effort into these cases. But it's just, it's a very sticky situation. And, uh, but then like with Tim and Lance, it's like, again, I don't know if the court's wanted these transcripts to get out. It seems that they didn't, but then it's like, I get on their level why why they would, because their show is about this case. This could be very important information, and you want to share that with your audience. They feel like they have an obligation to their audience. I haven't talked to anybody about this, you know, but it's, uh, it's just so funny because I know them all, right? Mm-hmm. Respect yeah. them all. Get along with all of them, right? But but some of them hate each other. <laughs> it's it's um, and they were at CrimeCon last year, and they did a a panel, and because I hung out with all of them, I was hanging out with Maggie having drinks, and Aaron was there, and they were disagreeing in front of me, right? So it wasn't like they were, mm-hmm. you know, holding hands and you know asking each other to punch them in the face. Right. But, but it was also funny too, because you know that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, they're all talking about each other. Yeah. It's like a weird competition. Like, who's going to be more important of an investigator in this case? Does that make sense? It does, but I think it's dumb. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's dumb. Yeah. But that would be like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's different. It's different, but it would almost be like me and Nick not liking 
Generation Y or something. Yeah. Like they're, because you guys do dudes. similar things. Yeah. Good dudes. Tim and Lance, good dudes. Again, I've never met Bill Roush, but from these allegations, not just one person and not just somebody he had an affair with, other people that have came forward, there's some dirtbag shit on him, you know? Um, and, but I, I'll, the, uh, I don't know. So, yeah, I hope, I hope I made sense. I, I hope I was clear enough. You know, I'm not a Bill Roush supporter at all. And if it was me investigating that case, which we've covered the Mara Murray case, and me and you have talked about that case pretty extensively, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, talk, I've talked to James about it. I thought James' book, uh, True Crime Addict, is a really good book. I think he signed a copy for you. He did. He asked me what my alibi was. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Morgan. What's your alibi? Where were you? Beats me, man. No, but yeah, alibi. But but also, I also don't know what else has been behind the scenes because I know that John Smith has some um, opinions of how the documentary came out and and the production team and all that stuff. But again, I wasn't there. But uh, so so I hope I hope that. None of the people that I mentioned are offended in any way because, like I said, I have a lot of respect for them. Don't agree with all of them. Uh, and I'm sure they don't agree with me about every single one of my actions, right? Yeah. It's just not it's just not going to happen. But, but I wish, what I really wish, and I don't know if it's going to happen. And, and also I've told this to Aaron personally is like, this guy seems like an abuser, and if you're a f- and you're defending him, so it's you're like standing up for the abuser. It's, yeah. You know, it's I, it's hard to get on the same page with a person like that. But I think with the intelligence here and the resources between James Renner, Tim and Lance, Maggie, Art, Aaron, the family, you know. But also, I think some of this nonsense could have, I think the family could have controlled this a little bit more um, if they think it's a distraction. But it might not be a distraction. It actually might be a distraction for a minute, but it actually keeps people talking about the case. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's So that's my rant. Did I get anywhere with that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, moral story is that's how we ended up breaking the bathroom. The, the bathroom. <laughs> is that where we started? We started out with oh, God. breaking the bathroom at the bar. Let's just delete all of this and then we'll go back. <laughs> no, you make sense, man. No, it's just like there's a part of me that's just like, get together. Solve the case. Yeah. There's so many of you. It'd be like Voltron. It'd be like the Mara Murray Voltron. <laughs> right? But the problem is, is even if they do that, you know they're going to be arguing about who gets what. Like, like I don't want to be the left foot. I want to be the right foot. Right. I want to be the green tiger. No. Right. I'm the red tiger. Yeah. Voltron. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like... We got real serious there for a minute. We did. Hey, no worries. No, but like, eh. but, you know, but domestic violence, I mean, there's no joke, you know, there's no joke there. I mean, I I am a champion. Like you look at any, well, I don't want to say any, because I'm sure that somebody would point somebody out, but behind every great man is normally a greater woman. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Yeah. But not behind every great woman is there a great man. That's true. So, right? Or like Damien Eccles. They ask him about God, and he said, I think God would be a female. I'm like, you're probably right. You're probably right. Because 
you know, when they say God created the earth in seven days, there's no way in hell a man created anything in seven days. He'd have to sit around and have a couple of beers and talk about how he's going to do it. Yeah. A couple of years later, he might <laughs> take a stab at it. You know, you want to get yeah. something, you want to get something done, anything. Mm-hmm. It's a woman. Cause it'll get done. So, yeah. Have I God, offended all the men now? <laughs> if God was a man, he'd be like, uh, I'll get to it in a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me finish this first. Yeah, but that was the argument back in the day. Well, we don't know, you know, if uh, how long a day was. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, like. Like our day is when the sun comes up and then sun sets, but we don't know if that was happening yet or if it was happening, was it happening at a slower rate? I'm like, well, if, uh, if God was a man, it probably happened at a very slow rate. Seven years well, per, per day. Well, it depends on, <laughs> depends on when this occurred because technically millions of or billions of years ago, Earth a day in, on Earth was uh, was faster. The Earth is slowing down, oh. Captain. So definitely, God's a female then. Yeah. All right, I guess we all learned something today. There you go. The number one rule always is the captain's an idiot, and the bigger idiot is Morgan. Yeah, I mean, but we are we are huge where it counts. We are huge. Thanks for listening to our show. We are huge where it counts. Thanks for listening to Captain and Morgan. If you like the show and want to know more, check out captainandmorgan.com. Please also remember to subscribe to Captain and Morgan on YouTube or catch it live on Discord. You can also follow Captain and Morgan on Instagram at the Captain and Morgan or on Twitter at Cap and Morgan. <laughs>